Hey YouTube, thanks for joining me this afternoon. I'm on a roll. Decided I want to knock out some previews of knives that I've gotten. You know, first impressions of uh, some of the knives that I've gotten. So, right here, this is a full custom knife made by Curtis Knives. It is the F3 full or large. <clears throat> it's a worn cliff blade, it's a flipper, obviously. The worn cliff blade and it has an amazing hollow grind. I don't know if you can see that, but the hollow grind um, has a very steep grind to start and then it, it, it narrows out and becomes very thin toward the end there. So, uh, as opposed to a flat grind, which is just a you know straight line, uh, it's uh, this is a hollow grind, anyway, regardless of that. So Custom knife, what does that mean? That means that one guy does almost everything to this knife. And I believe he, he does everything. They, he talks about having a helper uh, occasionally, and I'm not really sure about the details, but um, this is a full custom knife. So regardless of any of that stuff. Here you can see he's uh, milled out on the inside of the scale. Um, this has this wonderful texture. So this, so this knife is interesting. So people see this knife and get a very visceral response to it. Uh, some people just hate it. Uh, I got one guy that said it was a, a Liberace's knife, which um, don't think that was a compliment, but you know, who knows? Maybe it was and I totally misunderstood him. But in any event, this is a, some often compared to a Hinderer XM18. And in many ways, I guess that's a fair comparison, right? It has this kind of end here, that this tail, the butt of the knife, that kind of reminds me of an XM18. But this one is actually particularly narrow. So I believe this is actually the slim uh, version of this knife. So it's obviously slim. And while chamfered, I wouldn't say it's completely rounded everywhere, but that is going to be because of the design of this particular knife, okay? So he, I have another one of these Curtis knives that I'll review, and it's definitely a lot smoother. So um, take take that for what it is. It has this beautiful back spacer. Uh, I just, I like this design. Uh, it's a little industrial. Um, this pivot is a proprietary pivot. Uh, I will tell you that these knives have a tendency of you know, uh, backing out the pivot uh, as you play with it. If you're a knife, you know, a knife person like I am, you're going to play with this thing and it's going to back out. So I basically put blue Loctite in there. And I played with it for a little while, got it pretty, you know, pretty loose and then um, tightened it up several times because it was backing out. And then I said, you know what, I want to take a risk of uh, damaging this knife. So I blue Loctite it in. So in order to use this uh, to back out this blade here, um, I use a coin. I think it was a, a penny I used um, to back it out. So, and, and only one side turns, I believe. So you would, you know, just make sure if it's very tough on one side, very difficult to, to loosen it or tighten it or whatever, to go ahead and try the other side. Um, so this is a frame lock knife. It does does not have a steel insert in there, um, but that doesn't bother me. Uh, you know, it just doesn't bother me. I've never had a knife that had a problem with it. It, it you know, it's actually, anyway, I'm not gonna get into it. So this has a beautiful pocket clip. Um, you know, I mean, I think it's beautiful, but you know, maybe you don't. Curtis has this, this, I think he's ex-military and he has this, uh, uh, fascination with targets and bullseyes. And so that's what this is here, like a scope target, uh, there. And then this design here is also has a little scope. So how's the action on this knife? You know, it's pretty good. So, you know, you go here, you gotta be careful, uh, that it doesn't fall on you. It is a cleaver type of dropping system. So, you know, you've got to be real cognizant of that, how you have this tilted 
when you disengage it, right? Uh, if you have it tilted the wrong way, it's going to fall right on your fingers, and that's going to, you know, ruin your day. And, you know, and am I crazy about that? No, I'm not. Um, but it is what it is. This is this is something I want to say. So this is my first custom knife. Actually, the other Curtis that I have is my first custom knife. And I can tell you that when I pulled it out of the box, I was not as happy with it as I thought it would be because you've come to expect, or I've come to expect, you know, beautiful craftsmanship on, you know, a lot of these production knives. They're very consistent. Uh, you can get a knife with no imperfections at all. Um, with, but with a custom uh, knife, there's going to be, you know, something different about each and every single one of them. Like, you know, let's, for example, uh, this Curtis here is not as visible uh, as I've seen it before in other knives, right? So that uh, engraving here is not exactly the same in every single knife. So you're going to have to just, you know, deal with that uh, imperfection. It's perfectly imperfect. The flipping action on this thing, it's pretty good. You, I mean, just like any frame lock, you got to make sure you, you don't have your finger on the lock bar. And it's it's not as lock bar sensitive as a lot of knives, uh, but it, you know, you still can't put your your, your weight on there. Um, it flips out real good. I mean, I love this Warncliffe blade. I love the hollow ground. I mean, that's one of my favorite grinds. I mean, quite honestly, you know, this has got a great utility uh, blade to it, right? It's a great as a box cutter. I mean, you got the jimping here. You, you know, it falls. Your finger falls in the right spot for me. I, I have relatively large hands, but you know. Anyway, this is a great cutting edge. You know, you want to do some cutting work and all that. Um, it's amazing, right? Uh, you know, in self-defense, it would it as, as be as good. I mean, it's not quite as pointy, but uh, you know, this that this is not the knife for it. I mean, it's too it's too pretty, right? I mean, if that's what you want to call it, um, it's it's an ornamental piece here. I think personally. So what would I do different about this knife? I mean, the, you know, the the only criticism, the true criticisms that I could give this knife, uh, is the way it falls shut. It's uh, dangerous, right? You've got to be pretty careful about how how you let this this knife drop. And to be fair, this is not the only knife in the world that does that. And part of it is because of the geometry. I mean, it's a long, heavy blade. Uh, you know it's going to fall it's going to fall down um and you can you can tighten that up on on the pivot here so a part of that you know you can fix definitely by tightening this up but then it would be you know not as great of a flipper so and i re if i remember correctly there was a very very fine line to tune this in and um i might have just given up so you know who knows uh it doesn't really matter i just I just remember it being difficult to, to tune in. And right now, as you see, it's a drop shotty knife. All right. Well, you know, thank you for joining. Looking at this review, staying to the end. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I've got a lot more content coming. All right. Bye.